In World War II, there were many German prisoners of war who were sent to Allied countries to go and work. Many were sent thousands of miles and were kept in very basic conditions, but ultimately compared to the camps staffed by German SS soldiers, these prisoner of war camps were luxury. They were not concentration camps, but were more labour camps where inmates generally were treated well, but they were made to work in different industries in the local area. In Britain, many German POWs and Italians were forced to work in agriculture, and they would contribute to the food supply across the nation, and they were seen as an important workforce. Because of their treatment, very few people sought to escape and return back to Germany to try and get back to the Wehrmacht or the SS. A number of German soldiers were also sent to America, being shipped across the Atlantic to work in camps established in many different states. However, on the 8th of July 1945, in a prisoner of war camp in Salina, Utah, there were a number of executions which were carried out of German soldiers by an executioner who it was said had hated Germans, so he had killed Germans. This incident resulted in the deaths of nine prisoners of war, but what is the story of the executions of the German soldiers shot in America? To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. During the Second World War, Utah became a state that imprisoned around 15,000 Italian and German prisoners of war. They were held inside a number of different camps, and one of these was a small and modest Camp Salina. It was a temporary site to house a number of prisoners destined for Fort Douglas in Salt Lake City. However, the camp there was very overcrowded, meaning many Germans were housed in Camp Salina instead. From 1944 to 1945, around 250 Germans were held there, and many of them had seen action in Africa and were part of the Africa Corps. They had seen lots of action in some of the toughest terrain of the conflict, fighting for Rommel the Desert Fox in campaigns in Tunisia, but following the defeat of the Africa Corps, many of these prisoners were shipped across to America. There had been an agreement drawn up between the British and Americans as to how to split the prisoners of war who were held captive, and many of these men who fought in the deserts for the Wehrmacht were sent to America. Many of the sites in America to hold Germans were isolated prison camps. However, Camp Salina was actually found inside the small town of Salina, and was actually located at the end of Main Street, near to the heart of the town. The Germans who arrived there were tasked to helping agriculture, and were ordered to help harvest sugar beet and other vegetables and produce. The locals would remark how the prisoners of war, who were supposed to be their enemy, were very polite and were very friendly to the locals, and that very few incidents occurred between them. However, the Germans were guarded by American men, who were often unfit for frontline service in Europe during the Second World War, or they were guarded by those who had injuries or behavioural issues that meant they would not be suited to the army. One of the guards was Private Clarence Batucci, who was born in New Orleans in September 1921. He was a dropout at school, and then in 1940 he joined the American Army. He was involved in five years of service and did tour to England as part of an artillery unit, but he caused problems there. He was a rebel and had discipline problems, and ultimately was not sent to Germany to fight. Because of this he was furious and he claimed he had been cheated out of his chance to kill Germans. He was bitter against the enemy and he said, Someday I will get my Germans, I will get my turn. He was clearly a man who outright hated the Germans and he was someone who was probably not best suited to work in a camp guarding those who he hated, but other guards believed he would never act upon these urges. But they were wrong and in July 1945 when he was just 23, he would commit a tragic and brutal series of executions at the camp. In the evening of the 7th of July 1945, Private Batucci was in the local alehouses drinking and on Main Street near to the prison camp and he stopped at a cafe. He told a waitress that something exciting is going to happen tonight before he returned back to the camp to report for guard duty. But after the guard had changed around midnight, Batucci then waited for the previous guard to go to bed but he climbed up to the top of the guard tower, near to the officers' quarters. Inside this watchtower was a 30 caliber M1917 Browning machine gun. It was mounted to the position of the watchtower, and then he did the unthinkable. Whilst everyone in the camp slept, Private Batucci opened fire on the tents, containing dozens of sleeping Germans. He sprayed the machine gun at as many tents as he could, 
aiming to inflict a massacre, and he managed to hit 30 of the 43 tents. He continued to spray bullets at the sleeping German soldiers, and he was trying to execute as many as he could whilst they slept. Noticing what was happening, another guard rushed to the top of the watchtower, and he then removed Batucci from the tower, whilst he stated, Get more ammo, I'm not finished yet. The firing at the sleeping German soldiers lasted only around 15 seconds, but this was enough to fire around 250 bullets at the sleeping targets. Initially, the lieutenant in charge ordered him to come down from the tower, but Batucci refused to, as some of the Germans are still alive. He was then taken into custody without any resistance, but despite being in the alehouses before his shift, he was found to have not been drunk, meaning that he carried out this attack sober. Private Clarence Batucci was clearly motivated by his hatred of the Germans, but he had inflicted suffering and death at the camp, which was mostly peaceful. Six of the Germans were slaughtered in their sleep outright, and two later died inside of a local hospital, and also one died inside an army hospital. It was nothing short of an unauthorised execution, gunning the soldiers down whilst they slept. Nineteen others were wounded by the attack, and many of the prisoners had to be treated on the lawn outside the hospital, which was very small. One of the inmates who had been injured, it was said, was almost nearly cut in half by the machine gun fire, but he managed to survive for six more hours, until he succumbed to his injuries and died. Doctors noticed how the blood flowed out of the front door of the hospital. The victims were Otto Bross, a 25-year-old man from Forsheim, Ernst Fusch, a 24-year-old man from Kirschberg, Gottfried Haag, who was 29, George Liska, a married 31-year-old, Hans Meyer, who was 24, Adolf Paul, who was 28, Fritz Stockmann, who was also 24, Walter Vogel, who was married, and Friedrich Ritter, who was 48, and he succumbed to his wounds five days later. A local newspaper wrote, Clarence Batushi was under a mental observation today, after admitting that he sprayed gun bullets on a group of war prisoners whilst they slept, killing eight and wounding 19, because he just didn't like Germans. Another article said, Ninth Service Command Officers admitted that Batushi's record already showed two court-martials, one in England. His calm explanation seemed a little too simple. He had hated Germans, so he had killed Germans. There were murmurings about the perpetrator's mentality and how he committed the killings to avenge the death of a loved one in Europe, but this was not the case. Others claimed that he had been turned manic by a surgery which went wrong and made him bitter. Following the attack, Batushi was arrested and was held under guard at the Ninth Service Command headquarters at Fort Douglas. He had, during his time in service, been hospitalised 12 times, and many of those were for mental examinations, after fellow soldiers were concerned about him. The army initially believed he was insane, but then he was declared sane and was taken to court-martial. It was a strange time, as some in the army actually sympathised with the perpetrator for the massacre and attack. However, eventually Batushi was declared mentally unbalanced, and he was found insane by a panel of local military officers and doctors. He was then held inside a general hospital in Brentwood, New York, and it's not known if he was ever released. But what was bizarre was what happened to the German victims. They were buried with full military honours five days later. However, they were buried in American army uniforms, and not their German uniforms, which some would have seen as a disgrace. At the time, there were no flags allowed on the caskets, as the Nazi German flags and insignia had been banned and every casket had two reefs on it. Some prisoners from the camp attended the burials, but the Americans made sure that no Nazi songs were sung. Some of the wounded were later repatriated back to Germany, once they were well enough to be moved, but the Utah Prisoner of War Massacre is known as the largest killing of enemy prisoners in America during the Second World War. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, Thank you so much for watching.